Council, it is Monday, August 8th, 2005. Um, may we have the roll call, please? Chairman Swift Piata. Here. Councilor Backer. Present. Councilor Fritz. Here. Councilor Lynch. Here. Councilor McKinney. Here. Councilor Moles. Here. Councilor Roberts. Present. And the town manager? Here. And the town clerk? Here. Okay, thank you. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, it says presentations on the agenda, but we have none tonight. So can we go right to the minutes? Do I hear a motion? I would move approval of the minutes of the meeting of um, June 13th, 2005. Second. Second that motion. Is it June 13th or I'm July sorry, 11th? I'm July 11th. 11th. I'm sorry, July 11th. I stand well, corrected. <laughs> okay. It, um, did, did we have a second on that? I didn't hear. I second it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Reports and correspondence. Any counselors that would like to? I would like to make a comment um, congratulating our town manager, Mike McGovern, on his achievement of the uh, state professional certification from the uh, Municipal Management Association. Very impressive, Mike, and congratulations. Thank you very much. And we all join you in congratulating the manager. It's quite an achievement. Are there other um, reports or correspondence? Well, I know that we had the big beach to beacon this past weekend, but I will let the manager speak about that. It was a very successful, yet again, event. So um, can we turn to the town manager's report, please? I, just uh, two items. First, the beach to beacon, as, as Ann mentioned. Uh, do want to thank everyone who contributed. Uh, you know, I think it's terrific. To, to me, it's sort of become a homecoming in the community. Uh, when I look at there are almost 500. I think people as with residents who ran in the race. And if you look at a lot of the other names in the newspaper in that fine print, you'll see an awful lot of Cape Elizabeth names that now have Massachusetts after them and Virginia and other places. A lot of sons and daughters uh, uh, returned for that. And it's just, it's a wonderful coming together of the community. And I can begin to thank, uh, you know, a whole host of folks and by position, by title or whatever, but, uh, you know, it, it's really a coming together of so many people. And I uh, want to thank everyone who, uh, contributed to that success, and uh, it was good to see a number of the councillors there as well, in different capacities, helping out, as well as just watching, and uh, just a great, great community event, and uh, uh, the TD, Bank North, Beach to Beacon, uh, every individual connected with it, uh, it, their work's very much appreciated. So. Secondly, uh, I did want to mention uh, the passing of Ruth Jordan uh, this past month. Uh, uh, some of you remember Billy Jordan, uh, I think you probably already know Billy Jordan, uh, Billy was on the council here for, I think, about including Board of Selectmen, uh, uh, you know, well over 30 years, and uh, there were a lot of nights that Ruth was home uh, with the kids, uh, uh, taking care of them, and uh, Billy's absence, not only the council meetings, but so many other uh, events that Billy was at, but, you know, in her own right, Ruth as well was, was just a tremendous person. Uh, I can remember very well of her active involvement in the, the Engine 2 Auxiliary. Uh, I called it corned beef and cabbage. She called it a New England boiled dinner uh, that she was responsible for uh, every October 1st. And, uh, you know, there were so many activities and events, events that Ruth uh, uh, was always there, very, very helpful and, you know, just a, a tremendous person. I think if, if you look at, you know, her family, Pam and Carol Ann and Penny and uh, Bill uh, Jr., you know, I think it, it, it probably says an awful lot about her as well as Billy in terms of uh, you know, what a great mother she uh, was, what a great person. And uh, I know I on behalf of the whole council join in extending the town's sympathy to Billy uh, on the loss of his wife of 60 years, as well as uh, to the family, uh, her, her brother's sister as well. Uh, just a, a great, great lady. And uh, you know, the town was much richer uh, for Ruth Jordan. So thank you. She was indeed a great woman and contributed so much to this community and we do join you in passing our condolences along to the Jordan family and everyone else who will miss her. Um, 
Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. At this point in the evening, we have an opportunity for citizens to come up to the podium and speak on any items that are not on the agenda. Is there anyone here who would like to come forward? Seeing none, we will move on. That brings us to item number 202-0405, report from the Ordinance Committee. Um, Jack? Why don't I just make a motion, then I can explain what we're doing. I would move that uh, we set a public hearing for Monday, September 12, 2005, at 7.30 p.m. at the Cape Elizabeth Town Hall uh, to, act upon the, uh, as we, uh, to, to act upon the proposed changes in the sign ordinance. Is there a second? I second that motion. Okay. Is there any discussion? I'll follow up with the discussion. Basically, what we are doing with this report is uh, two items have come to light. One with the most recent election that we needed to uh, revisit the language that uh, had uh, some issues with it during the, the prior election. And then the town manager had some concerns on how signs and the, the town public signs were being used or could not be used. and. So the committee has met, and uh, again with David's uh, great help, have uh, put this in a, a good package that should be very clear and concise in the future. Okay, thank you. Is there anything that any other councillors would? Yes, Councillor Moles. I feel that there are some areas of this sign ordinance that concern me, um, and I'll leave that for the public hearing, so I'll vote in favor of the public hearing. But I feel that there are some areas in this sign ordinance that are rather restrictive and I think impinge on our right to free speech in certain areas. And I'll make mention of that next month. But uh, I'm not, not happy with the way this has progressed and come back to us again. You know, we've already passed the sign ordinance, I believe, earlier this year. Didn't we adjust this? No, we're no. adjusting it again. Oh, we didn't uh, do it any work. We did not do it in a workshop manner, did we? Hang on, the manager. There was a there was a an amendment earlier in the year regarding uh, the signs at uh, athletic fields. That's all. Yeah. Yes, okay. that was just one portion. Okay. This is the whole sign ordinance that okay. well, you know, we're, was gone through. Right, but we you know so we we're come back and we're re revisiting the signs again. Um, but that whole issue aside, I have some issues I'll bring up next month. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Fritz? I was just wondering if this just went to the Ordinance Committee or whether the Planning Board has looked at it. Uh, generally, amendments to the sign ordinance do not go to the Planning Board, they go to the Ordinance Committee. I think I had made a request when we were sending it to the Ordinance Committee that the Planning Board look at it, and I thought that was what was going to happen. I think the manager told me that would happen. <laughs> Yeah, I apologize if, if I told you that because I, I did not uh, uh, make that happen. So I guess I'm, I'm thinking that these seem to be good as they address the couple of issues, but I'm thinking that it ought to go to the planning board and I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more um, where it talks about the purpose of the ordinance is to have it be in keep signs be in keeping with the town character. So I'd like to see a little more of that explored by the planning board. Okay. Um, we have a motion before us, and the motion is to set it for public hearing. If there are other motions that Councillor Fritz, if you'd like to make. You can either make them tonight or make them at next month's meeting, presuming this does go to next right. month's agenda. I mean, I would prefer to amend the motion that <clears throat> instead of sending it to public hearing, that we um, have this reviewed by the planning board, um, particularly looking at signs and it's keeping with the town character. Yeah. Um, the manager, um, just told me. Say that aloud. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, what, I, what I said, Dan, that's really a, a substitute action. It's not an amendment. And if you wanted to have a substitute action, uh, Robert Fools of Order, the way to handle that would be to defeat the main motion 
and then to bring forward a new motion. A new motion. Councillor Roberts. Part of the reason in trying to bring it forward at this time is that we do have an election coming up and there were some issues in the last election. So my preference would be to have it taken care of now and if somebody wants to send it back again for additional tweaking later on with the other issues, so be it. Okay, other comments? I would uh, comment that I agree with Jack. When we worked on this in the ordinance committee, our intention was to clarify the language and to clean up areas of, of uh, concern and areas that were, um, could be misconstrued. And we did that, and I think we did it quite well. If other issues come up, there's no reason we can't revisit it. This is not something that's carved in stone, but it's, it's a way to fix it so that we're going to have an election coming up in a, few a couple of months, and it's, it, we need to make sure it's clear so that it doesn't become an issue once again. So I have a question for the Ordinance Committee. Um, the, there were no real substantive changes. This was more clarification of what it, so many square feet per side of a sign, as I read through the yes, draft here. Yes, that was, was intent. So it's not really any changes or modifications to what's already on the books, other than it clarified that we met, met, meant per side of a sign as opposed to whatever. Yes. Duplicate. But dual sides. That's correct. Okay. Um, Councilor Moles, were you? Well, with, with all respect to Councilor McKinney, <laughs> it may not be carved in stone, but if it is passed as an ordinance, there is a $50 minimum fine for a violation of the sign ordinance. So we want to make sure we pass an ordinance that is good and acceptable. And, and you are correct that we are just clarifying some issues that needed to be clarified, and I don't have any problem with that. It's the particular size limitations that we've had on the books that I have some problems with, which I will make mention of next, next month. Okay. But uh, you know, I feel that some of our sign ordinance areas are a little too restrictive. Uh, but th what's before us tonight to be put to public hearing next month is really just correcting some language in the existing ordinance. I have no problem with that part of it. Okay. Councillor Backer, did you have a comment? Well, I was just going to um, follow up on Councilor Moll's uh, remark. That is that this ordinance is currently, for the most part, in effect already and has been for quite a while with regard to signage uh, si or size issues for signage. So there's nothing that the amendments um, are doing that will create a more restrictive sign ordinance than we currently have in effect. We're simply clarifying ambiguities that may exist. So if there's a proposal to change the or create a more liberal sign ordinance um, for different types of signs or numbers of signs or size of signs, that's not something that the ordinance committee looked at um, or considered and it isn't something that was before us. I mean, the catalyst that sent this to the Ordinance Committee to begin with was the issue that came out of the last election. And it was in looking at that issue, we just cleaned up ambiguities and tried to create consistencies among the various sections without any substantive changes okay. as to number, size, or types of signs. Okay, so there are no substantive changes proposed from what has previously been the standard. It's more clarifying the language and standardizing the language, as I understand it from. Well, the, the, only, the only substantive change, I suppose, and maybe the town manager can correct me on this, would be with regard to municipal signage. Um, and perhaps, did we make a change with regard to signage up at um, Playstead? No, not Playstead. Uh, at New Lions, did we clarify that also? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead, yeah. please. The uh, you know, it's tough to define. You know, what's yeah. substantive, what isn't, depending on one's earlier inter interpretation of the two sides of signs and how you measure square footage. Some might say that that is substantive. That's a a, uh, a qualitative judgment. Uh, beyond that, the municipal sign change that you, that you asked about, uh, David. Uh, 
relates to, we were looking at the limitations on how many signs are allowed, and we looked at the, particularly the refuse disposal area, and under the existing ordinance, there's no way to properly sign and instruct citizens as to where, where to put different things at the transfer at the recycling center with, without broadening the language, and in fact, we believe that the signs there are as they now stand, uh, are in violation of the current ordinances. Similarly, at Fort Williams, the various instructional signs, directional signs, are, are not uh, in terms of their, their, their numbers, uh, because it's a single property is the real issue. Uh, there, there was an issue with the ordinance, so that language broadened out. And while, I'm, while I'm speaking, if I might, beyond mm -hmm. just the questions. Uh, you know, if there's, you know, Carol mentioned some desire to have this looked at further, and Michael uh, would apparently like to look at Add it further. You know, if you know, it'd be tough to amend it at the next meeting because they, they would not have gone through the public hearing. But if you know, either of you have specific suggestions, you know, there, there's nothing that that says that we can't start a new process. You know, in addition to these amendments, to to really take a comprehensive look at our whole direction of of sign regulation uh, in the community, if the, if there's desire on the council to do that. And you know, so if you had some some concerns, you could you know bring those forward as, as a package of amendments that that you could propose or that uh, uh, you know that could be considered by the council through the process. Councilor Fritz, I'll plan on supporting this version going to the public hearing um, because I guess to be consistent with the whole idea that we have a comprehensive planning process going on, and that we said that we wouldn't change ordinances uh, and wait for that process to go through. But I do want to say that when we did have a workshop with the planning board, I asked whether that this was an ordinance that they had any interest in looking at. They said yes, they did. I think that it is, I think we ought to look at ordinances from other towns and get some ideas from towns that, that have um, some good signage. And, and have that be a significant process. Um, but I think these, I'm happy to have this go to public hearing. Okay. We all set? Okay, let's move the question on setting this for public hearing. All those in favor of sending, setting this for public hearing? It's unanimous, okay. And did you want to make that in the form of a motion, Carol, or do you want to? Um, the uh, dealing with these things as a whole, that sending the issue to the comprehensive plan committee, or, or has the manager heard the direction? Do you, no, do you feel you have to? Re not really, because I, uh, you know, I, I've heard what each of the two councils have said, but you know, why don't I continue a dialogue with them beyond the meeting to figure out how they, they wish it to proceed. Because okay. I think they might be in conflict with each other. And, you know, Michael hasn't spoken. I don't want to steal his thunder and his points, but there, there are constitutional questions with any sign ordinance that are that uh, are deserving of review, and in this one as well. And I don't know what, what Michael's particular concerns are, but it, it wouldn't hurt to to have a review of some of the constitutional free speech issues as well, which which was not the the context of this review, but. It okay. wouldn't hurt to have a review in that context. Okay. Well, I think we're done with this item at this moment then. Okay. Moving on then. Item number 203 um, which has to do with the Thomas Memorial Library Foundation. Mike, did you want to introduce this yeah. at all? Or I know we have some people from yeah, And there's also representatives right here. here of the Charitable Foundation. And, uh, we have a new 501c3 a few months ago, the Thomas Memorial Library Charitable Foundation. And because it is a new group, it, it's felt that it would be good to have an, an understanding uh, with them on funds that are raised, and particularly what's the role of the library staff and what activities go on at the library. And this accord, uh, Jay and I discussed a little bit, it was discussed a little bit with the trustees. Uh, he then had it looked at uh, by the trustees and shared it with the foundation. Uh, it, it is not real, real detail. Uh, it, it sets an overall basis uh, for you know some of the handling of money. It, we could go on pages and pages and pages as some of the others do, and you know maybe that's something that will come over time. This was an attempt to get the the, the basic framework of 
of what's the li library staff's role and w uh, what happens uh, with money that they come in and the promotion and marketing of the independent group that goes on within the library. I, I won't go over the details of it, but it's it's a it's an accord that uh, is an under, would be agreed to by both groups as to uh, the parameters of how fundraising occurs and when checks blindly come into the library, what's to happen to it. Okay. Um, I don't know if anyone from the foundation had a presentation. I'm not requesting a presentation, but I just wanted to, wanted to be polite, make sure I wasn't cutting you off. So, okay, cool. Um, do I hear a motion? Dave? I move the approval of the proposed accord between the town of Cape Elizabeth and the Thomas Memorial Library Charitable Foundation. Or the, actually, it's just called the Thomas Memorial Library, Library Foundation. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Um, yes. I appreciate Lynch. I appreciate very much the efforts that have gone into creating the foundation um, and um, the great advocacy work that the trustees themselves have um, engaged in on this issue. I have some concern, which I think has increased over the last few weeks, um, as I. I guess make comparisons whether they're appropriate or not. It's hard not to when I think about where we are with the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation. Um, I'm also a little concerned because I saw some printed material from the library which seemed to direct f contributions from the friends to the foundation instead of the library. Um, I was involved in the creation of the friends or the recreation about 20 years ago. I, I think it's gone on and stopped for a while and then it got started again. Uh, so I, I guess I would like to have, I would like to suggest that we have a workshop and have a discussion about this issue perhaps um, with the foundation before we um, get too far along the line. So um, I, I would be voting, I guess, against the motion, not because I'm necessarily against it, but I do have some, I'm looking for a higher level of comfort than I currently have. So I think a workshop would be helpful. Okay. Other comments? Question? Jack. I would support Mary Ann's uh, position that it, it needs to go to workshop. An awful lot of questions have been raised recently and this one in the same boat. I would not vote for it tonight, maybe after a workshop, after some questions are answered. Okay, other comments? Carol? It does seem to me that when we have foundations that are created by the town and also that would apply to the education foundation, I would think, um, that there be some consistency in how we review them. Well, it's, if I may, just to, to be uh, clear, the town didn't create the foundation. And, and again, I appreciate the efforts that have gone into it by people who care very deeply about the library, as do I. I just want to have a higher level of comfort than this document provides to me as to um, how things will be directed, um, who the library director answers to. I think they're has the potential to be inherent conflicts for Jay Sherma and library staff with respect perhaps to two masters. So uh, I want to um, have that discussion, but I think it's a little different um, than the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation, although I see some parallels in some things that uh, make me want to have more of a conversation. The Fort Williams Foundation was created by the town council, I think. Um, both CIF and the library have been created by citizens who are very concerned and, and advocates and wanting to go out and, and raise money. And that's a good thing. I don't want to dampen that enthusiasm um, or those efforts. Um, but um, I, I think we need more of a discussion than we've had. Okay. David, did you have your hand up? Well, I'd like um, the council to have an opportunity to hear from the library director on the points that have been raised, particularly the question, I think, of whether the, 
the director sees himself as potentially serving two masters. And also maybe addressing a little bit of the question of exactly what the purpose of the foundation is and why uh, and it may be perceived as a benefit. And are you asking for that now, or, or are you supporting the idea of a workshop, doing um, a workshop? Well, I think it's appropriate for the council to hear that briefly now. Okay. No, I just wasn't sure which way you were going with it. Okay. Um, yeah, and know. we also do okay. have, I'll <clears throat> just note that we do have um, uh, Bob Steer, the president of the foundation, here with us tonight. Great. Thank you, Jay. You're welcome. Could you please introduce yourself just for the cameras, please? Where are they? <laughs> uh, I'm Jay Sherm. I'm the library director, head librarian, depending on how you read the title. Um, I personally don't perceive a conflict. Um, it's clear to me I'm an employee of the town of Cape Elizabeth, and my first charge is to the, the town. Um, and I answer to the town manager. Uh, that's, that's the direct um, supervisory chain of command established by town bylaw and ordinance. Um, speaking to the purposes of a foundation, um, I think I've said before to the, to the council that foundations have become um, part and parcel of what is almost um, expected or de rigueur in the, in the library community. Um, as funding has become, since the mid-80s, more and more tenuous for libraries, um, library systems, whether they're large urban library systems like the Seattle Public comes to mind, and, and you know, I would invite you to check out their website as, um, as a, an example of a large urban foundation. Um, or county systems or small libraries across the nation uh, have turned to foundations. In our case, the discussion actually began with um, protecting the Friends of the Thomas Memorial Library who had never formally filed 501c3 papers. Um, and as their bank balances started to rise, they became more and more concerned uh, about um, the legal responsibilities governing uh, charitable organizations and fundraisers. Um, so the discussion initially began as one of umbrella, uh, an umbrella organization um, to provide the protection that the friends needed. Uh, secondarily, I think the foundation was conceived of um, in light of the Pileski Initiative um, as a way of um, shoring up and securing municipal funding. Um, for the library. Uh, you will recall that some of the scenarios that were under discussion during the um, planning stages for how the town of Cape Elizabeth would deal with uh, Pileski should it pass um, had some pretty dire consequences for the library among other town departments. And I think that a, a number of citizens under those threats began to look at foundations very seriously as being um, the um, wing of the library um, for fundraising. Um, for whatever reason it may or may not be, merit, many donors find it far more um, enticing to give money to an organization that has a 501c3 status than simply handing it over to a municipality. Um, and you know, as Michael will tell you, there are all sorts of tax shelters allowed to a, a private citizen who does give money to a municipality, um, but sometimes private citizens want that. Um, there are some advantages in a foundation in terms of how investment portfolios are handled over municipal funds, which are more tightly regulated. Um, in terms of your question, Marianne, about the direction of gifts, um, it's a straightforward answer, and that is that the friends are being subsumed under the foundation. Um, so what people are being told is simply that the friends are now underneath and using the same tax identification number as the foundation. Um, does that answer people's questions? I, I don't want to talk to hear myself talk. Are there any other, while Jay's up, is there, are there any other questions? I guess not. Thank, Thank you. you.
Thank you. More comments? Yes, Councillor McKinney. I'd like to uh, comment on this. I do support this accord, and, and I think the fundamental difference between this and what we experienced with the other foundation is that um, the Fort Williams Foundation is that Jay is clearly an employee of the town. There's a, a direct link between the town manager and the library, whereas the other foundation is, um, even though it was established by the council, it doesn't have a direct link. And therefore, I think that um, there's greater opportunity for misunderstanding and um, perhaps different directions in terms of what the council had in mind versus the foundation. I think in this case, it's very clear to me that the foundation has the same um, concept in mind that the council would in terms of supporting the library and making it viable long term, regardless of the tax um, situation that might exist in the future. So and th that's why I would support it. Thank you. Anything that any other councillors would like to say? Carol, Mike, no? You guys all sat down there? Okay. Okay. Um, I share some of the um, interest in just getting more information. I'm not necessarily for or against the foundation. I will not be supporting um, adopting this tonight because I would just prefer to have a workshop on it where we could have a more complete discussion, give and take, um, with the foundation board and, and um, just to get a better sense of, of uh, the details. Um, so I will not be supporting this tonight. That is not to say that I would not be supporting it at some time in the future, but just tonight I'm not comfortable with it. Um, yes, and the manager. Uh, yeah, thanks, Ian. Sorry. One, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, I understand the council's desire of a workshop. You know, in, in the shorter term, we do need a protocol to operate under. And you know, what, what I will do is sign this one off as, as an administrative procedure, understanding that it can be eviscerated, eliminated just as soon as the council puts in whatever it wants to put in. But in, in, in but by just being administrative, it doesn't have that that umbrella as policy. But we, but we need something in place uh, in order to deal with deal with the issues in the short term. So I just didn't want the council surprised to hear that that happened. But I but it doesn't have the, the standing as council policy. And I, I fully understand that as soon as you wish to have the policy that uh, it, you know, it, there's no sense of ownership. So are you saying, I'm, I'm not sure, are you saying that this is somehow changing from perhaps I don't understand what this no, I'm just, is. We're going to operate under this awaiting future direction from the council, awaiting a council so policy as an administrative, <laughs> as an administrative <laughs> protocol. Okay. I think that's that's appropriate. Okay. Anything? I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. There's still a pending motion. Yes. And I, I was going to move the question, but I didn't want to well, cut you I off. Well, I was wondering if. Michael's suggestion to operate as an administrative action at this point, um, my thought would be perhaps the motion should be, could be withdrawn. We have the workshop. This. Just withdrawn on the understanding that this will be how it works administratively for until we have the workshop. Seems to me to make sense because it, it strikes me as somewhat unusual to have a motion to support this and if it's the motion doesn't pass then i think the manager is in a somewhat untenable position implementing an administrative policy that has failed as a motion mm -hmm. right that yeah, wouldn't look good <laughs> so i will be happy to withdraw the motion okay and i'll withdraw the second and recommend we send it to workshop okay do you, do you want to make that inform Sure. Motion. I motion that we send this accord to workshop to be worked on by the council, and in the interim, the town manager will implement it as a administrative, administrative procedure. Administrative procedure. procedure. Second. There's, there's a second for that. Okay. Any further discussion? The previous motion has been withdrawn. Okay. All in favor of Councillor Moles's motion? It's unanimous. Great. Thank you very much.
Thank you. I think that was a good discussion. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much to Jay and Bob and um, to the foundation and the friends and everybody who's been working on this. And we will schedule the workshop when we look, look at our list of workshops, but hopefully as, as, soon as, we, as soon as we can get it into the... Not in August. Not in August. <laughs> Not in August. There's too many hot meetings in August. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving on. Um, item number 204-0405, report from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Is there something you'd like to say about this? I would Mr. recommend Mark? you also refer this to workshop. Okay. Do I hear? Someone. It's been moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes. I, I just want to thank the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. I know they've spent a lot of time um, working on this, and um, I appreciate that they've pointed out for us a lot of the logistics that would need to be considered um, were we to implement any kind of fee. So I appreciate the work that they've done to date, and we look forward to having the discussion with them at a workshop to be scheduled, not in August, <laughs> until we have air conditioning. Yeah. Okay. Or cooler weather. Okay. Can, Any? Is, is there just Council Council one explanation that I don't know if the manager knows what it is, but what is a white mountain forest envelope system? <laughs> Yes. A, I was a little a vague on that myself. I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you if you wish. Yeah, I would, I Paul just, might remember better than I do. Well, I was just up in New Hampshire a couple of weeks ago, and um, in the White Mountain National Forest, if you wherever you park, you're supposed to have a park parking pass, and it most it's pretty much voluntary. If you if a park ranger comes by and sees that you don't have a, a pass in your windshield then you could be fine. However, um, most people abide by it, and you pay a fee, and you, 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 know, you put it in voluntarily, and you put your pass in, and you're, you're good to go. For the so, so how do you get your pass? Is there you, just a pile well, of passes the, there? You can go to the, um, um, they have different offices. I don't know, I don't want to call them offices, but different locations throughout the White Mountains where rangers are and you can pay them. I did this a couple of weeks ago. You pay them $5, they give you a little um, item that you put in your windshield. Or they have an envelope system where you can just pay it. And, um, and how do you get the pass to put in your windshield? They just have them in the parking lot? Yeah, they have them to take. available. So it's, 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 it's like an honor system. It's an honor system. I mean, if you go through a state park in Maine, many times there's no ranger there because they're short staffed. You put money in the box and you, mm. you go in. And, you know, some, at some point, we have to trust pe that people will do the right thing. <laughs> okay. So that's the idea behind that. Okay. You're all set, Carol? Okay. <laughs> Any other <clears throat> comments, questions? Okay. Do we have a motion? Did, some, did we make a motion to refer this to a workshop? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, okay, item number 205, 0405, uh, negotiations with the police association. Uh, I don't know. Do I hear a motion? Oh, be, and before, before we do that, thank you very much. The town clerk has reminded me that this is a motion that we'll have to do with an executive session. Um, and before we do that, we should probably do the citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda, if anybody would like to come forward at this point and do that. No one's coming forward, so we're done with that. Thank you very much, Deborah. Okay, do I hear a motion on item number 205 I'll move that in accordance with 1 MRSA section 405 paragraph 6D that we enter executive session to discuss negotiations with the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolence. Is there a second? Is it with? Or? Oh. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, is, is it, we will come back into public session, but I Solely presume for the just for adjourning. We will not be taking any other votes. It's not anticipated, so. Um, all those in favor of going into executive session? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much to everybody who was here tonight. Quick meeting.
and we will adjourn to the back room.